Hi everyone, how are you? It is Dr. Emily, functional podiatrist, human movement specialist, and founder of Naboso. So one thing that I get asked all the time from my patients, especially those with overpronation, who are using orthotics in their shoes, but they are ready to be training barefoot, they wanna to try to explore strengthening their feet, but what do they do if they actually need these custom orthotics in their shoes? Can they still train barefoot? So this is what I do in cases of overpronation. So this is not just regular feed, mild overpronation, maybe a little bit of calcaneal eversion, strengthen those intrinsics, and you're good to go. These are people who have a little bit more of that pronation in the foot, that they're starting to feel certain symptoms, it's transferring up to their knees. What do they do? How do they train barefoot? So you got the orthotic, you wanna understand the principles of an orthotic. Now, the way that most orthotics control over pronation, which I'm going to show you what that is right now, if you can see my feet, is that is where we're collapsing inward like this. So if you have this degree of over pronation in your feet, maybe because of muscle weakness, core weakness, ligament laxity, there's different causes for this degree of over pronation. Now, what you want to be doing is thinking about how to get that foot into a more neutral position. One way that you can do that with or without orthotics and wedges is consciously rotate into those hips, externally rotate and pull that calcaneus into a more inverted position and lifting the arch. And then this is where I would want you to be doing your squats and your short foot and your foot to core. However, that gets very tiring, exhausting. So if you are someone who has overpronation and you're rotating and holding your arches up, as soon as you start loading your body and doing other complex movements, it's very hard for you to consciously hold that foot in that position, which is why really orthotics exist because when we move dynamically and subconsciously it is hard to really hold our arches up we just cannot do that it's defined physics and physiology here so we're going to take that same principle of an orthotic and what's really done in the heel of a lot of orthotics which is a post it's called a varus post now that varus post is a wedge that is placed in the back of the heel and it is pushing or angling that calcaneus into a more inverted position. So we're going to mimic that through a foot wedge when we do our barefoot training. So what I have here is a foot wedge and we are playing around with this at Naboso. So if it's something that you're intrigued by, definitely inbox me. I'm gonna have these with me at Perform Better and at IDEA. So if you're joining me at those conferences, we'll play with these wedges. But what you're doing is you're using a wedge and we're gonna place it onto the inside of the heel to mimic the effect of the orthotic. Now the angle and the degree of the wedge is really important because we're trying to neutralize the heel, not the row it to invert it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. You take the wedge, let's say I have a bilateral over pronation. I'm gonna take the wedge, again, this wedge is 10 degrees. Really a standard orthotic correction is about five degrees, maybe even a little bit less in some of the patients. It just depends on really the level or severity of overpronation, but you're really looking at nothing more than 10 degrees. So be really careful with the wedges that you might use. So I'm gonna place the wedges on the floor. Let's pretend I'm gonna do a squat and I'm going to be placing the inside. So the angulation of the wedge, let me just show you again. The angulation of the wedge, the high point is going towards my midline and I'm going to place it under the medial aspect of my heel to create a varus post. So now that as I'm standing on these wedges, and I don't have over pronation, so I'm just gonna have to mimic this, but as I'm standing on the wedges, this angulation is throwing me into a more inverted position. Now as I do my squats, or if I'm standing here and I wanna find neutral, and then do a bicep curl or maybe a lateral raise, whatever the exercise is, now I don't need to think about my feet. My feet are in neutral, so now I can engage my intrinsics, my glutes, my posterior tibialis, my core, and I have found a nice, strong, stable base. 
So the other aspect of how I create a stable base is that I need you to find your tripod. I need you to spread those toes wide, connect your feet down into the ground, and now we can use these wedges to keep the back of the foot into a neutral position. Now I've essentially allowed everything to achieve the alignment for proper activation. So when I do short foot, my foot is put in a stable position to optimize the way that those intrinsics are going to activate. And I got one more fun tip for you of how I also use these wedges with patients is a, let's say in the case of a limb length discrepancy. Now, oftentimes I get asked, well, what do I do if I have a longer leg, a actual structural longer leg that was confirmed by x-ray or a scanogram? Dr. Spookel, can I train barefoot? Yes, you can. This is where we also want to understand how we can arrange this. So I would take a wedge in the same way because when I have a longer leg, let's say my right leg is longer, the way that I compensate to make my right leg shorter is I'm going to pronate. So this is how someone would typically stand if their right leg is longer than their left. So what I would do is I would set them up the exact same way and I'm going to put them in neutral. So hold on, this is not just simply using this. I'm gonna put them in neutral. So this is going to make this foot into a neutral position here. And then since I just made that leg longer, I'm going to have to put something underneath my left foot. So I'm gonna go underneath my left foot. Maybe I'll put a mat. I'm gonna put a mat. Here we go. <laughs> Off of the set, I do apologize, but I'm gonna put a mat here. So this is gonna be my setup for someone who has a limb length discrepancy. Of course, I would know exactly how much that limb length discrepancy is, but I would say, here, I just stacked you up. This is an eight millimeter thickness on here. I just neutralized your longer leg by putting it into that position. So now you can be in a barefoot training environment by using different tool, tools to get you into a neutral and a balanced position. Okay, so again, those big takeaways is if you have someone with overpronation or you listening have overpronation and you are using these orthotics in your shoes, but you want to train barefoot to get that sensory stimulation, those intrinsic muscles going, you just want to add that variability of not always having to be in your shoes when you are training, lifting, and rehabbing. This is where you want to understand how you use wedges. Now there's other wedges that are on the market, so you do really want to understand them. You want to understand the degrees and how you're correcting it. Now, the, the negative side of getting thrown too far into an inverted position is you actually lock the ankle. So if I do something super aggressive, I'm actually going to take our toe wedge, and this is a much greater angle. This is a... 25 degree. So if you look at me here, and now I'm in a 25 degree angle. Now, is that something that is going to potentially injure me? I mean, it's changing the mechanics around the joint. So as I'm here and I'm squatting, it is throwing everything into the lateral line. I try to create a stable tripod base by finding a neutral calcaneal position, such as something with a 10 degree wedge, versus throwing all the way over into a super supinated or inverted position. Now there's definitely different schools of thoughts that are out there, but you wanna to listen to your body, you wanna to listen to your clients, you wanna to listen to your athletes, and if they're getting too far of a correction into that lateral line, lateral hips, all the way into those lateral glutes, then you wanna decrease the degree of that inversion or on that wedge. To learn more about your functional feet mechanics and sensory aspect of your feet, please go to my website, dremilyspickle.com. Consider looking at our courses on ebfaglobal.com. And if you're curious to learn more about those wedges, definitely inbox me. Those are coming soon through Naboso. Have a great day. Stay barefoot strong.